Welcome to RV and Travel Adventures. My name is Jesus Manuel Menagarza. I hope you're doing fantastic wherever you're at. In this edition, I talk about e-bikes and e-bike safety, types of e-bikes, uh, e-bike hitches, etc., etc. So hope you enjoy this video. I'm an avid uh, cyclist and also uh, I'm an avid motorcyclist. I'm wearing my current... Uh, leather jacket. I have a couple of these and uh, they have pads right here, pads right there. And I also, of course, have a helmet, gloves, etc, etc. It even has a pad, a gigantic pad in the back. So this protects me in case I get in an accident. And I have gotten into accidents while uh, riding my motorcycle. Just coming to a stop here in Fort Worth. I hit, just coming to a stop going 20 Five miles an hour I hit some gravel and my bike just went this way and that way and I skid for about 10 feet luckily I was wearing my pads my other jacket the jacket shows <laughs> the strains of getting hit and my boots got scraped on the side luckily I was wearing some specific motorcycle boots and they instead of me getting my toes uh, scraped off the boots got a little bit of scrape Let's talk about the basics, the absolute basics of, uh, you know, e-bikes and what to look for in an e-bike, what to consider for safety in an e-bike and also hitches. Let me, first of all, let me get out of this. Believe it or not, that uh, jacket was designed for summer cycling. Uh, you know, it has perforations and such. A lot of folks that go in the rain don't want to wear that jacket because it's, you know, moisture gets inside, etc. I've a uh, motorcycle, let's say, for example, Joshua Tree by Palm Springs, and uh, no, no problems there. It just keeps me cool, the air comes in, etc., etc. So I'm not going to recommend something as dramatic as that. You know, that's designed for accidents, 35 miles an hour, 55 miles per hour, stuff like that. So you just slide along the road. Come to a nice stop, hopefully before an embankment or a cliff, and you're set. So I'm going to be looking at my notes over here. It's on another screen once in a while because that's how I roll. I am not, uh, you know, one of these uh, YouTube influencers. I'd like to be an influencer, but uh, I don't have the looks and uh, the, the capacity to be an influencer. Maybe some of you are influencers. Congratulations. So I'm going to be looking at my notes over here. I see a lot of folks on the old YouTube getting free bikes. They get free bikes because uh, they are going to be promoting the product, the, you know, the adventures, the abilities, the capacities of e-bikes. So they get them. They go out there. Typically, they're old farts, uh, farts that are not necessarily athletic, and they just go out there and they have a good time on the e-bike. They're very casual. The typical e-bike enthusiast in the United States is a casual cyclist. Again, they are casual cyclists and they just barely they like to turn the grip a little bit and just go up those hills, etc., etc. My wife and I, when we go uh, hiking around here, there's some hills, a little bit of hills, and I, and I have to actually step on, the, on my pedals of my regular bike, my standard bike, and I have to go up that hill. That's pretty tiring. But on an e-bike, you just go, zoom, and you're up those hills. Hey, hey. It's not as much exercise, but it's still better than sitting on your sofa watching the old uh, videos and movies and sports and stuff. It's good to get out. It's good to go out and do some cycling. Enjoy Mother Nature. Get some of that fresh air. See, see what's around you, and et cetera, et cetera. So it's under, it's, I just turned to the left just to look at some of my text here. Let me do that again. It's important to understand that most bikes and most bike parts they are made in China. There may be a company that says their headquarters is in Oregon or in New York or in Texas or in Colorado or in California, et cetera, et cetera. But their bikes, where are they made? Where are they assembled? Where are all the parts are made? Where are the batteries made? Where are the grips made? Where's everything made? They're made where? They're made in China. So essentially, if you're going to buy an e-bike, you're buying a Chinese bike, okay? That's the harsh reality. The United States has dropped the ball in regards to cycles, bicycles, you know, e-bikes, and, you know, a whole lot of stuff. So that's 
the reality. So why are you considering buying an e-bike? Well, some of you just want to just uh, go from your campsite down to uh, where you're going to go fishing or to a picnic table or just cruise around. I'm just cruising around and I'm just having a lot of fun. I see a lot of people like that uh, when they're going e-biking. Okay, I understand. I understand totally. You want to go, uh, you know, around the old uh, RV park, the old campsite, hey, around the neighborhood, uh, you know, you can go in an e-bike and do it rather, rather, rather easily. Even if you're overweight, out of shape, an old fart, I'm over 70 years old, I can see the value of an e-bike, but, you know, it's all up to you if you can afford an e-bike. Typically, e-bikes go for, like, 800 bucks, a thousand bucks. A good e bike starts around 2,000 bucks, 2,500 bucks. And really fancy ones, three, four, five thousand bucks. Okay. So let's talk about the types of e bikes. Uh, for RVers, I seriously recommend that you get the folding type. Blop. They fold essentially in half. They have a little section there where you pull something and you fold them. And you know, most popular ones are made by electric. That's L E C T R I C bikes. Uh, that's an American company with uh, essentially the bikes are made where? Where are they made? Well, they're made in China. And of course, Rad Power Bikes and other manufacturers make these folding bikes. What's the benefit of a folding bike? You can just, if you're strong enough, <laughs> these bikes weigh, you know, a good 70, 50 pounds or so. You've got to lift them up. You can put them in the trunk of your tow vehicle or in the bed of your tow vehicle or in the pass-through if it fits, if you got a big enough pass-through. Do you have a big enough pass-through? Do you have a big enough pass-through? So you can put them in the pass-through of your RV and call it good. Then you just pull it out, unfold it, and you're ready to go. Very nice. Very nice. Another type of bike is a more conventional style. Those do not fold. They do not fold. You could try to fold them, but they won't fold. And those uh, go in the back hitch of uh, your uh, RV or truck or whatever you told me with class ABC. You can just put it on the hitch in the back or in the back of the trailer hitch also. I have a hitch for my bicycles, my conventional non-electric bicycle. I have a hitch that can handle that. So you have different kinds of e-bike options, okay? Again, the benefit of a folding e-bike is that you can store it wherever you want. Again, in the trunk of your tow vehicle, in the bed of your tow vehicle, or in the pass-through of your tow vehicle, or you can just put in a hitch in the back. It's all up to you. One of the things to consider when you have an e-bike is to make sure it's locked up. There's a lot of folks out there that say, hey, that's a nice e-bike. I like it. I'm going to take it home with me, even though it's not mine. It's yours, but I'm going to take it home. I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. Thank you very much. I've heard dummies out there serious dummies out there really big 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 dummies out there who forget to lock their <laughs> e-bikes they go somewhere they leave their ie bikes in the back of their you know vehicle the travel trailer or whatever fifth wheel and they leave it there and they forget to lock it up they don't even lock it up. they say i am a trusting human being i believe in the good <laughs> the goodness of folks out there Idiots. I call them idiots. And of course, they lose their $3,000 bike. Two of them. And they go, oh my God, I didn't know this was going to happen. Naivety. That's a significant naivety. Okay? So you buy an e-bike, you got to have it locked up. But next, you got to need a hitch. A hitch. A typical e-bike weighs 40 to about 80 pounds, and they're pretty heavy. A typical regular bike, like my wife and I, you know, ride around and weighs about 20, 30 pounds. Very light in comparison to an e-bike. And uh, you don't want to be dangling, like in this example, <laughs> dangling on this piece of crap uh, hitch, okay? You want to get a, a hitch that can handle the weight. You put your e-bikes up there. And again, it's, it's, it's a bit of a task. It's a serious task to lift that bike up there. It's a, my wife and I sometimes do it together. We go, oh, we just even our lightweight bikes we put up there and it's a bit of a task. And if you're an old folk, old geezer, an old fart, uh, you know, it, it, 
it can be difficult. So understand before you buy that e-bike, are you actually going to benefit from it? Are you actually going to lift it up, put it on the hitch, or fold it and store it? Are you strong enough? Are you actually strong enough? Some of you are not as strong as, uh, as The Rock, okay? Dwayne Johnson, you're not as strong as him. You want to be, but you're not, okay? So here's some clothing ideas. I just thought I'd show you some clothing, motorcycle stuff, helmets. You can buy a helmet. There's various helmets out there. You can put a helmet on and buy. And again, when you're cruising around in your, uh, you know, your e-bike, you should have a helmet. You can have a bicycle helmet, but you're going to be going a little bit faster than most folks on. You're going to go be 25 miles an hour, and then you're going down here. You go, wee! It's a lot of fun. I'm going 35 miles an hour. Uh oh, I'm slipping now. I'm sliding down the road. Oh no! So you got to wear a helmet, at least to protect your noggin. You know, the most important part of your body. You may get totally scraped all over. You know, your bones may be showing <laughs> after the scrape, but at least your head's still, you know, screwed on relatively well. So wear a helmet, a bicycle helmet, a nice bicycle helmet, maybe a skateboard helmet. I like those skateboard helmets. Or a very basic $50. You can buy them at some you know, motorcycle shops. Very basic helmet, and you can call it good. They come in different colors. Some are super cute. You can get a pink one for, for the guys and girls who like pink. Or you can get some shiny ones, chrome color, black. You can have a, some badass symbol on the side. Oh, my God, I kick ass. I'm, I'm badass. Or you can just buy a very nice bicycle helmet. It's up to you. And again, uh, always assume that you're going to fall. I've ridden my bicycles. I just, my bicycles, my, you know, my little mountain bike downtown in Southern California. And I turn a corner. I turn a little bit too fast. Again, hitting some gravel, just like I did in my motorcycle. I hit the gravel and I start sliding. Luckily, I have my helmet on and my gloves. Gloves are your brakes. The first thing you do when you fall down is put your hands down. Stop. 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 And your gloves. You need some good, decent gloves. Not some cheap-ass gloves. Say, these are nice. They feel very they feel very nice. One, you know, I don't like to get too hot. I don't like them. I like a soft, delicate glove. You know, but you've got to get some sturdy gloves. When you're hitting the ground, you want those things to take the brunt. The brunt. The absolute brunt of the, uh, you know, asphalt the gravel, et cetera, the road, okay? Because that's your brakes. Put your hands down, okay? So, of course, you can always get a motorcycle jacket. You can always do other stuff. It's up to you. You know, there's some jackets out there. Maybe add a little padding. Who knows? Do they make e-bike jackets for the summer? Yeah, I, you know, I do a lot of summer motorcycle riding. I do a lot of summer bicycling. And all my clothes has, my clothing has, Perforations to keep me cold, cool at least. When I come to a stop, all of a sudden I'm pouring sweat, 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 sweat. Then I move along the road, and <laughs> again the breeze helps me out. In this video, I talked about uh, what did I talk about? I talked about types of e-bikes, e-bike safety. You gotta be safe. Some of you like to be naive. I see people riding their motorcycles out there without no helmets. They're cool. I, I don't wear any helmet. That's their prerogative. You know, they want to be uh, skin donors. That's their issues. They want to do that. That's their prerogative. And, of course, types of hitches. My wife always wears a helmet because she experienced some very negative situations just riding around her just a little pedal bicycle. You know, she hit a spot and then fell over, and her head hit the curb, you know, the edge of a curb. Bam! You know, luckily she had a helmet on, and luckily she got spared. Very good. And of course, if you're an active kind of person doing cycling, motorcycling, e-biking, there is going to come the situation where some idiot is going to stop in front of you and you're going to have to slam your brakes and you may be skidding and stuff like that. There's a lot of problems out there. There's a lot of idiots out there. And you may, you know, some are related to me. I apologize. So be very careful out there. Uh, get the right e-bike that you like. You know, be safe out there. And also get a very nice, you know, carrier hitch for your motorhome or travel trailer or truck. So this has been Asus Manuel Menegarza. Don't forget to like. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I would greatly appreciate it. This is a rather modest channel. Again, I've been cycling for quite a while. I know of what I speak. 
I've been cycling in San Francisco. We live in San Francisco. I used to take my bike to the beach and then come back up and go down Golden Gate Park, San Jose. I've, you know, been in the the deserts of uh, Arizona riding my bicycle. And I go, what's that? Oh, that's a rattlesnake. I better lift up my leg. <laughs> Didn't get me. Lucked out. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on out there. So I have a lot of, a lot of experience. If you have any questions, feel free to send them my way regarding cycling, motorcycling, and of course, e-biking. Feel free to contact me. Again, my name is Jesus Manuel Viena Garza. Finally, uh, please leave your kind and friendly comments below. Abajo. Muchos, muchos gracias a todos ustedes. This channel is over 3,000 subscribers. Wow. We're growing like gangbusters. Not really. So again, from Fort Worth, Texas, don't forget to ring the bell for uh, future notifications. Muchos, muchos, muchos gracias. Again, where am I at? I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. Gracias. Adios. Bye-bye. Thank you.